Okay, everybody. So I got an update here on the FC09. Uh, just doing some roundabout maintenance. That's a lot of things. This started as just a shock replacement. It always starts as one thing. And then you're like, well, since I was in there, I decided to, you know, check my plugs, which the plugs are actually okay. Um, but I'm still going to replace them just because I have them out. And, but really what I was curious is to see if there was any, uh, see if it was running lean or running rich. And what I see here is, uh, this is 100% normal, uh, probably a tiny bit lean. Uh, I don't think so though. Uh, and here's my reasoning why. A lot of people out there think that if you put an exhaust system on your bike, and don't get the ECU flash that your shit's going to run lean. That's not true. Because it has a fucking O2 sensor and a map sensor. So what's that mean? It means no matter what, your engine, unless you have something specifically done to your ECU or ECM, however you want to define it, the factory settings are always going to adjust for what the, what the atmospheric conditions are and what the engine is doing so uh it, it it's it was running fine uh except once it got a little warm in our operating temperature just a slight drop in power and i noticed it had kind of have a hard to start issue once warm and so me being a mechanic knowing full well what that means uh it means generally with overhead cam yamahas that your valves are too tight one of them, either the intake or the exhaust. Now, in my case, my intake was perfectly in spec here. So you can see I did all my numbers here. These are what they measured out to all on the intake side. Uh, between 0.15 millimeters, the tightest one was 0.13, but still well within specification. Just so you guys are aware, the intake is uh, going to be supposed to be between 0.11 to 0 0.20 is your range here the exhaust however way the fuck out of whack you can see all that those are very 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 tight extremely tight uh point they're, so they're supposed to be between 0.26 and 0 0.30 millimeters so there's there's much tighter tolerances on the exhaust and, uh, well, not tighter, but I mean, less leeway, um, on the intake, you've got about nine millimeters of play, but you only get six millimeters of play. Either way, this is how far out they are. You can see that this was 0.21 out, 0.015 out, 0.027 out, 0 0.0. So basically the, at my tightest one, was was 0.27 out of spec so i pulled them out and these are the shims that i had in there and they're all relatively close i've got two well, two of them at 1.8 and then the biggest ones at 1.86 and then most of them are about between 1.7 and 1.75 so um and then down here, these are the ones that I need. Looks like I can switch out shim one on cylinder one or three here and move it over to cylinder two. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't have a lot. I can, basically I'm gonna have to buy fucking shims. Uh, sometimes you can get away with swapping them over. But, uh, yeah, uh, so just so you guys know, uh, this is what I call poor man's race suspension here. This is a shock off of a, uh, it's going to be between 2004 and 2007 Kawasaki, um, SX, or correction, uh, uh Kawasaki 636, or the, basically the Ninja 600, uh, the RR. It's supposed to fit better, but the R's fit just fine. Uh, something to note, if you're going to do this conversion, you have to put the reservoir down if you have California emissions. 
because of this stupid fucking thing, which is your uh, your charcoal canister, basically your vapor canister for the uh, fucking uh, fuel fuel vapors in the vent and the tank. So, so yeah, night and day difference. You can see the old shock sitting over there. Fucking piece of shit, garbage. Uh, basically, when I would sit on it, it just kind of it had a lot of bounce in it. There was some dampening at the end, but a lot more bounce. This thing, uh, I tipped it over, kind of sat on it, pushed out. Dude, it acts like a real shock. I mean, there's dampening. You can feel it. You can hear it. And I had to do literally nothing. Uh, if you're a lighter rider, you might have to take some of that preload out. Um, but in my case, it fit right in. The only thing that I had to do is you have to drill out the lower mount. Not the, not the linkage, but on the shock. You have to drill it out uh, to fit the Yamaha Kingpin that goes back there. And word of the wise, you only need to do one side. I chose to do this side because, believe it or not, the bolt is easier to slide in and out going this way, even though factory it comes that way. So all I did was flip it around. doesn't change anything. Made it substantially easier. So now I can... Now, if you're just doing the regular, like, if you spent the fucking Olean suspension money, you know, which I don't know why you would, because this on eBay was, like, these range, depending on their condition, from 30 to to 100 bucks. I have never, I haven't seen one over 100 bucks. so, and it's, it's a Shawa shock. I mean, it's it, not putting down Olean or anything, but Shawa makes good fucking shit. So, um, now I can definitely feel that the front end needs to be done, and there's a... A trick you can do with that, if you'll notice here, the front right is the only one that gives you really any dampening, and the left doesn't give you shit. So what you do is go on eBay, get a factory cartridge for the right side, install it in the left, change your oil up to, uh, I think factory they come with five weight oil that's way too light. So go with like, if you're a heavier guy like me, go through go for 15 or 20 even if you're a light guy have st st stiffer suspension on a sport bike is better for handling hands down all the way is your daily ride going to be a little less comfortable for sure but you'll get used to it and i'm sorry but for me handling is a safety issue and it's much more uh much more important than comfort uh this is i, I want a bike that when i put it into turns isn't going to fucking buck me off. Because that's the way this thing was, dude. You'd go into turns and just... Ur, 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 the back end would kick out a little bit. And don't get me wrong, it was kind of fun. But at the same time, my buddy on his uh, CBR1000, uh, which is the Honda version of this, uh, he'd kick my ass. And it's a naked bike. It's not a sport bike or anything. I mean, I guess they're all sport bikes. But it, it was, it's a naked bike, just like this one. And he was just fucking mopping the floor with me in the turns. And it's not for a lack of power. Um... So yeah, uh, definitely, oh, another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to swap out that garbage fucking chain tensioner for the cam chain. Uh, did a lot of reading on it. Everyone says they're prone to failure. This one, I'm not sure if it was, but I did start to notice some noise coming from this side of the motor. And it was, uh, it, it wasn't always there. It was intermittent, which is what they say is the sign that they're 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 about to fucking take a shit, which is good. So I, in in a way, I feel like I got I got ahead of a lot of stuff. Number one, these valves being as tight as they were, I, I really can't believe it was running, even at all, um, because there was almost little to no play whatsoever. And uh, like I said, the signs that you're you these MT O nines and FC O nines are known for this. I've done a lot of reading on them. This is, again, my first MT-09, so I don't want to by any means say that, oh, I've been doing this for years as an expert. But they are absolutely positively 100% known for the exhaust valves tightening up on them. They came from the factory a little tight. Uh, I've heard of guys having to adjust them as early as 15,000 miles. So, if you, And that makes sense uh, because it's a new engine. It wears. But this one's got almost, what, 54,000 miles on it? And my buddy had it done at like the standard interval at 20,000. They were obviously, they obviously needed to be done because a couple of these in here uh, are, are the factory ones. 
and then the other ones are from hot cams so i know that i know that, that they've done it so i actually don't have the shims that i need which sucks because i do have a hot cam shim kit but they're the wrong size so yeah um it is what it is i gotta go get some more tomorrow and hopefully that takes care of that i'll get the valves done we're gonna do the oil change we're gonna swap the coolant out for uh, some new fresh shit and then uh just take the clutch apart fucking inspect it see what they're at probably just gonna order a new set of clutch discs while i'm at it um i don't know of many clutches that go beyond 50 to 60 thousand so and definitely the more power I'm going to put this, I'm also going to send the ECU off to get flashed. And yeah, so that's, that's where we're at. So list of things to do still got to swap the cartridge over here on the left with an eBay stock cartridge from the right. Just put it in there. Uh, we need to replace the fork seal while I'm at it on this one, but I'm going to do both anyways, just so I know for a fact they're fucking good. Um, yeah, so suspension, got to do the valves, and then plugs, oil change, and clutch. And we should be good to go. It should be a whole new bike after that and be good to go for another twenty five, thirty thousand, 30000 um, at least on the motor side. Uh, definitely want to want to keep an eye on those exhaust valves, which is kind of disappointing because if hopefully, like I've heard people say that after about, 30 to 30 to 40,000 they quit wearing as quickly like the typical valve adjustments will last a lot longer as the as the bike wears in and ages which makes sense that's been my experience with the 426 and pretty much any other Yamaha it just just sucks because I'm so used to just one cylinder engines you know that uh here I gotta buy a whole fucking and and, and the shim kits if you buy the kit that's fine but the sizes that I need, they only have so many in that one size. So for me, it's just going to be easier to go to the dealer and say, hey, I need them between this range and that range. And give me two of each. Um, so because, well, that'll vary. Like I said, one of them I can interchange. So I need to buy five shims. But anyways, that's uh, that's where we're at. Uh, I wish I could, do, could have done an install video on this shock. I know a lot of people would have liked to have seen that. I'm um, just not going to lie to you. There was really no easy way to do it. Um, <laughs> there is a guy out there that's already made a video about it. It's pretty in-depth. Uh, but it is it is a son of a bitch. And as you can see, man, there is not a lot of room for anything. He did the reservoir up. But in this case, he didn't have California Missions bike. So he had room to do it. The only thing he had to do was cut this out here. And then zip tie some shit out of the way um but you know at the end of the day i think this is gonna work just fine i have had people or read people on forums say oh when you put it down the heat from the engine heats up the shock and this and that and it's like well i don't care how much which way you orient that fucking reservoir it's pretty much always going to be getting heat from the engine so and we'll show you here the cool part is, is I can now reach the lower dampening adjustment. There's a mid and high, and there's the mid and low, and I can reach it all. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot more range of adjustment, although, realistically, uh, fits great. And, you know, yeah, it's got a red coil, but I really don't think it looks that bad against the yellow because the... The shock body's gold, so it, it'll all kind of match here. Uh, then I'm going to paint my valve cover yellow, kind of like what I did with that, how I painted it blue. I just like the look of it, and uh, we'll be all set. So, yeah, that's the update with the MT-09 or FC-09, whatever you want to fucking call it. Uh, I should have it back and running here in another day or so. I just need to get some shams. Fucking sucks. But uh, I also need to clean the fuck out of this garage. <laughs> Word of the wise, man, if you're fucking wrenching, take the extra time, clean your garage. It is a son of a bitch to get this shit done. Um, but, you know, hey, 
uh, I know where all my tools are, believe it or not. <laughs> so, anyways, folks, that's it. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you stuck around this long, thank you very much. Go ahead, like, share, subscribe. Any questions you have, feel free to put them down there. I'll answer them the best of my ability. Again, see you, folks. Thanks again.